thought retirement annuities were unfashionable and were dead in the water. There is legislation, of course, that's come to the fore and will come into operation from the end of March that has changed that. But generally, where do you stand, for or against? 100% for, and probably the best question is, do I invest in them? And the answer is substantially uh, to the extent that there are tax benefits and, and other advantages. Okay, so you're, you're for, but as I said, uh, with the proliferation of different retirement products and generally uh, products being invented by the financial services industry, they did go out of fashion. Why was that, first of all? Well, I think, I think the word you use of invention is, uh, is, is important, and that is that if the strategy works for the end user, it's probably got a long shelf life and it's sustainable and it makes lots of sense. If you look at retirement assets, uh, traditionally they were sold by uh, uh, bro the traditional brokers. Uh, they were sold for long terms on an assumption that you'd pay a premium for the next 20 or 30 or sometimes longer, uh, that there'd be escalations built in and there was an enormous drive to earn significant and rather extraordinary commissions. The uh, issuers of those assets also enjoyed benefits of sustained uh, expected incomes uh, and, and commissions and charges were levied. Uh, and, and that was really unattractive because after 10 or 20 or 30 years, the investor wakes up with a terrible return on, on, on the net investment. The modern form of retirement annuity type savings is there are a couple of things you need to look for. You need to look for what they call as and when fees. So if you place funds, you get charged on that uh, payment. There's no forward assumption of, of contributions and commissions. Um, and secondly, inside of those wrappers, and what makes me so interested about these, is the enormous tax advantages that, um, that Treasury and SARS allow one uh, in, in um, the retirement annuity and generally retirement investment space. Well, we'll get on to that in, in a second, but just going back to that commission argument, is it the RAs that was got, got, got such a bad name because the brokers or the people that were selling them got a really big, huge, loaded upfront commission and people found that a bit distasteful? Well, they, the, yes, it exactly is that. And, and it wasn't distasteful in the moment. It was distasteful 30 years later when you woke up. Uh, approaching uh, the sort of period when your hair goes the, the color of my sideburns and, and you sort of say, hey, I'm, I'm thinking seriously now about retirement and, and the returns that you achieved are way below those that you might have expected. And probably uh, through clever marketing, through big organizational marketing, uh, perhaps one of their portfolios did superbly well, they push that out uh, into the media and your expectation is sadly uh, un underscored by poor performance. Before we get onto the tax efficiency aspect, talk about the way of contributing to RAs. Well, there are principally two ways. Uh, uh, the the, the way, way we favour is if you make a regular contribution through the tax year towards the year end. For those of us that earn large amounts of bonus or a, a perhaps are commission driven, where that is not factored into, you can't really pre predict exactly what those numbers would be, you might expect uh, to, to do a top up payment. Why we like the regular contribution is that that um, um, uh, ends up uh, allowing one to be a slightly, slightly more aggressive in your investment strategy because you're putting little bits in on a repeated basis. So you put kind of RAND cost averaging is what they call it, uh, as opposed to a large lump sum where you might be inclined or disinclined to take a lot of risk because there a very large lump sum is going in. So typically it's either on a regular basis, which can be a, a, a change from time to time, or topped up if your income stream or your preference is to do so just before the tax year end. So you're not against a big lump sum. For example, if my Aunt Vera dies next week, let's hope she doesn't and leaves me something, I can put that in and, and sort of embellish my monthly uh, payments, if you like. You, you can, uh, and, and obviously the administrative systems and setups that the different institutions and the licensed users of these uh, products or offerers of these products um, limit you to, but it is definitely a, uh, a potential investment. Discuss Section 10C, you say here. Now, this is something new to me. It's newly introduced. It's new to everyone. Effective end of March. What is it? It's end of March of next year, or, or I beg your pardon, the 1st of March of next year. In other words, one tax year away. But that's quite interesting oh, to us. Okay. And, and what that means is that the investor, if they've saved into retirement annuities and they have not used that contribution to set off against taxable income, because the receiver very generously allows one a deduction of certain amounts of your retirement contributions from taxable income. If you have not taken that advantage, from March of next year, 
there will be a tax benefit available where you can set off drawings out of a pension against unclaimed or uh, disallowed contributions as they call amounts. You should definitely engage with your advisor or your accountant or the life company that you or investment company that you place your RA with to understand the, the, uh, the details of Section 10C, but it is unquestionably advantageous. It does sound like a meaningful and progressive step by the authorities. I, I think that Treasury, SARS, uh, the, the Ministry of Finance and the government in general are extremely interested in the preservation of savings, the uh, promotion of effective retirement product and investment by the broader South African population and accordingly they've created these advantages which certainly are worth having a very careful look at.